Hello everyone. In this video, I am super excited to take you through one of the new features of Microsoft Excel called as Dynamic Arrays. This is not necessarily a very new feature because it's been in beta testing since September 2018. But well, I got access to it just last month and I am super excited about this particular feature. What is so great about this feature, if you ask me, I would say it removes one of the biggest limitations that Microsoft Excel had compared to other programming languages, which is about running a looped operations. So in other programming languages, you could use something like a for loop or a do while loop to repeat the same process again and again. But when it came to Excel, that wasn't that straightforward. Not that it was impossible, but it wasn't as smooth as what it's going to be with the dynamic arrays. To keep it simple, if I have to say what is dynamic arrays, well, it now allows Excel to return multiple values with just one single formula. Let me illustrate that to you right away. So let me share the screen with you. So here, if you look at it, what we have is I have my sales and profit data across several years from 2009 to 2018. For a moment, let's just assume that I want to transpose this. I want sales values to come across rows rather than being across columns. So what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to type a transpose function here equals transpose. And I'm going to select this entire region. Press enter. Well, you know that I just gave one formula and it has written multiple values simultaneously. As I told you, this was not impossible earlier. We could have done it in the older versions as well. But how do we do it? It would have been slightly more complicated. So in the older version, if you had tried typing equals transpose, what you would see in your cell is a simple hash value error. Now, by the way, what do I mean by older versions? Here, by older versions, I'm talking about all versions other than Office 365, Office 2019, Office 2016, and even the past ones. At least as on date, which is February 2020, we haven't got these features in any of our licensed version. It's available only in Office 365. That also, I believe it's available to everyone because I don't have any insider access and it's available to me. So if you had tried this transpose function in any of the earlier ones, what you would notice is you would see a hash value error. But if I had to get it, the other way I could have done this in the older versions is select a bunch of rows and columns where you want these values to come. And then we're going to type the same function equals transpose, select the values. Now, instead of pressing enter, what we are supposed to do is press shift control enter. And then we would have seen the same thing happening. Of course, we had to do a little bit of formatting. But here is the problem with this approach. What was the problem? The problem is that if you select lesser number of rows and columns, well, you will miss out on some data points. So you need to exactly know how many columns and how many rows of data you want to be transposed. Here I selected less number of columns and you notice that, well, I don't have my 2018 numbers. And by chance, if I selected more columns or more rows, what you would notice is something like this hash na for those columns and rows for which we don't have data. It's just a great ISO which we don't want. But as you could see here in the new version, it's pretty easy with the dynamic array implemented. You just type one formula. It automatically takes into consideration how many so ever rows and columns you want. So with dynamic arrays, Microsoft has also introduced a few additional Excel functions which utilize this dynamic array feature. I'll take you through some of these functions. See, in this video, I'm just going to take you through what these functions do and what Dynamic Array does. I will soon be releasing more videos that will give you a use case scenario for these Dynamic Arrays in financial modeling or data analytics. So let me give you an, another example here with these new functions. So here, if you look at it, what I have is a database of uh, employees with their grades, department, designations, and salary. And let's say what I want is a summary table here which gives me a list of techno uh, list of departments with number of employees in them and with the average salary of these employees. Of course, the best way to implement this is through a pivot table. Uh, but just for the sake of discussion, let's say you don't want to use a pivot table. How else can you implement this? Let's discuss that. So what we are going to do is if you had to do it earlier, what you would have done is you would have copied these departments 
pasted them and then go to the data tab and click on remove duplicates. We have only one column so I am going to continue with this column. Remove the duplicates and we got this. Then I can use a count if or an average ifs to get these things done. But problem in the process that we just followed was that it was somewhat manual because later on let's say I get a new department added I will have to again repeat the process in here all over again. So what's the solution now or what how does this dynamic array changes now with this dynamic array Microsoft has introduced a function called as unique which essentially is going to fetch us the unique values. So I'm going to simply select unique and the department press enter and you notice that all the department names have automatically come. Now I'm going to use a countif function to get the number of employees in each of these departments. So let me use a countif, countif, I want to count the department values. The criteria, normally you have to select one cell as to what the criteria value should be. But here what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this entire range of cells that we just had. So you notice something interesting here, what you see is a J5 hash and what this hash indicates is that you are referring to a range which is essentially a dynamic array. And when I close it, again I have entered this formula only in one row, but I press enter, you notice uh, it's returning me four values because the criteria had a dynamic array in it. Same way, I'm going to have average salary, this I'm going to obtain using average ifs function. Average ifs, we want average of the salary, provided the department is technology, but again the sentence of technology, I'm going to select all four. Close, press enter, and we got this average salary. How does it enhance our work rather than doing it manually? Uh, let's see that. Let's say I'm going to add one record here to this table already that I have. Let's say I'm going to add a new department. So I'm going to paste this new department over here or I'm going to add this department and you notice the moment I added the department without having to do anything else, automatically a department got added into our summary that we created, the strength got added and the average salary also got added. Again, as I said, you know, the pivot table is probably much better in this case, but just as a case in point, how you can use this unique function or the dynamic arrays, this is one example that I just showed you. I'll also illustrate you some more functions. The next one I'm going to illustrate you is a filter function that was introduced as part of this. What a filter function essentially does is it that it helps you to filter a data from a table and put it elsewhere. Now if you want to filter this data in its own place, then it's easy. Let's say if I had to filter it for technology department, you could use the filter feature and then we get the department. But what if I wanted this in some other place? What if I wanted this automatically in some other place? In that case, what we are going to do is that we are going to use the filter function. So I'm going to use this function called equals filter. And then I'm going to select this table. Put a comma. And the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to select the department column because this department has to be a department that we mentioned and I have mentioned that here what department I want I want technology I select it and I close it voila so you notice that this function has written me the entire filtered values in one go if I change the department instead of technology let's say I wanted marketing well we got it and you notice that my data is automatically shrinking uh, HR and we see it expanding automatically again I would would have been able to do this in the without the dynamic array as well but that would have been more of an optical illusion using conditional formatting and a little bit of brute force it wouldn't have been as smooth as what we've got here and one more uh, function that i'm going to take you through now is the sort function and post it i'll also take you through a sequence function what they do a sort function essentially helps us to sort an existing table based on one of the fields and put it elsewhere. So let me sort this. Let's say I wanted to sort this table based on the grades. So what I'm going to do is equal sort or I am going to rather use a sort by function because I want to sort it by a specific column. 
So I want to sort this area by which column? By the grade column. So I select this. Sort by the table 1 based on column grade. And here if you notice that I've got this data by grades. I could have also done it using a sort function as well. So what I could have done is I could have done the sort function. So I could have said equals sort. Select this area and here in the sort index, I could have mentioned that we want to sort it by the grade and grade is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, fifth column. So you could type comma 5 and close it and we've got it sorted by grades. We could have also got this sorted on the basis of descending order rather than ascending order by choosing our sort order as minus 1, which is for the descending order. And this gives me the descending order of the grades. Cool, right? I'll take you through one more function, which is a sequence function, which I've been loving its use. Right now, you may not notice a lot because I'm not going to take you through an uh, application case for the sequence function. I'm just going to tell you what it does. In the next video, I'll take you through the application case for the sequence function. What does the sequence function do? It just creates a sequence of numbers. So I'm going to put equal sequence 10 and what you notice is it creates a sequence of 1 to 10. What if instead of sequence of 1 to 10, I wanted this across columns rather than across rows. Then what you could have done is sequence. So we want it across one row, but I'm going to say I want it across columns. Let me put 26 here. I want let's say 26 numbers. Sequence 1, 26, and you notice that I've got a sequence of columns running all the way up to 26. It's also possible that I don't want the sequence to start at 1, I want it to start at something else. Let's say I wanted to start at 65. So I'm going to put sequence of 1, 26, 65. So 1 is the, I want one row of data, 26 columns of data, and the data has to start at 65. And you notice that we've got 65, 66, 67 going on till 96 or 90. Uh, if you know ASCII codes, you would know that the 65 is the ASCII code for capital letter A and 66 is for capital letter B and so on. So what I could have also done is instead of 1, 2, 3, 4 or 65, 66, if I wanted the characters A, B, C, D, I could have nested the sequence function inside a character function, char sequence 1 and notice that we've got ABCD coming in place. Sometimes you may also want sequences in multiples of something else or with a particular step. So let us say I want to create a sequence of 26 values across columns. So one wrote 26 columns but I wanted to start at 0 and I want to increment at 12 per column. So I want it to increase at 12 units every column. So what you do is 1, 26, 1 row, 26 columns. Then a starting value is 0 and then you could press the step value here as 12 and close it. So here we could see we have values increasing at the rate of 12 units every column. Can you think of what we should do if you want the values to remain constant? Let's say I want a, just a value 5 repeated 26 times. How do we do it? So you could use a sequence function. So one row, 26 columns, my starting value is 5 and in step value I'm going to put it as 0 because I want it to increase at the rate of 0 every column or by 0 or points every column so that means I'm going to get the same file repeated 26 times. As I told you the use case may not be straightforward but I will be coming back to you with the use case in the next top, uh, videos. So if you like the power of dynamic arrays and if you really excited about it as much as I do what I would like to do is I would request you to share, uh, like this video and also share it with your friends so that the word spreads uh, but uh, before you also start using these functions. Let's be careful about one thing. This is right now avail available only in Office 365. 
and it's not available in any of the other versions and if you're going to share your file with your friends or colleagues who are not using office 365 well then the time for this function has not yet come i should say but definitely the future looks bright i'm assuming or i'm hoping that these features uh, come loaded into the past versions as well or at least in 2019 and 2016 in a matter of three four months and when it happens it's going to be exciting for all of us hope you enjoyed this video Thank you and see you with a new video next time. Bye-bye.